Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we'll uh, visualize quantization. We will look into it, how it is happening. So you will get a feel of it. And then we will play with large LLMs such as Llama, ETP models in just the free tire of Google Colab. The free tire which I'm using today actually is just T4 GPU, which has very limited resources. Uh, for example, if you look at the resources here, we just have 15 GB of memory. So loading a 8B model or 8 billion parameter model in 15 GB memory actually is not possible, but we will do it using quantization. To dive deeper, quantization actually is really solving a lot of problems, especially for students and academics, because LLM have become a game of uh, large resources, large GPUs. And the free tires, like we see are really limited. To do something meaningful, you can use quantization where you can load large models and even do inference or fine tune them based on your specialized tasks. Quantization kind of solved two purposes, the memory efficiency, like GPT or Llama actually have billions of parameters. And because of that, you require very specialized hardware or consumer gate GPUs. And the inference speed, actually in the low precision, it's very faster and so inferences take less amount of time. Uh, LLM visualizations uh, of quantization is done in this notebook using very simplified approach. So this is a very simplified version of how LLM quantize uh, their weights. First, given the weights as inputs, uh, we do some steps and finally, I'm again converting the dequantized form. We'll go through these steps, but let us look at the example first. Uh, these are some of the sample weights for activation from a neural network. In reality, when we are using LLM quantization, these activations or weights are coming from the LLM itself. Now the quantized weights, uh, we are simulating using that function which you are seeing above, and we are trying to quantize it to four bits. If we, for example, run this function, what you will see is original, the input which we are giving, and after we quantize and again convert back to the value space, we see that there is some change, like, uh, and this change is actually visible to the naked eye. Why this change is happening? Because we are quantizing it to the four bits uh, space. Uh, now let's look at the function. What we are doing is we are trying to find minimum and maximum value of the weights. And finally, we are trying to find a scale using this minimum and maximum values and how much of bits of information or quantization we are allowing. Finally, using this scale, we convert it to integer space. We again convert back this integer space to the original space of real numbers. In this entire conversion, this number of bits of precision is very important. The higher the precision or bits we allow, the better kind of conversion back happens and minimum loss in information takes place. For example, in this one, if we allow eight bits of precision and we run this, uh, you see the changes are actually minimal. We are almost retaining the original values, but like I showed earlier with four bits of precision, the changes are actually somewhat visible to the naked eyes. So this is a kind of a motivation uh, to show that we expect some changes in the model behavior with the four-bit quantization and some degradation as well. Uh, but uh, the good thing is that you can actually use this quantized model and fine tune it further, and you can recover the performance on some of the tasks which you're after. In this notebook, we'll uh, look at large model for inference purposes only. And I'll try to create a future video of how to find unit on your specialized task in, in this quantized space itself. Uh, further, I have included a second example where you can visualize simple quantization uh, better. Here, again, I'm simulating the quantization behavior, but this is even a more simpler form of quantization. The earlier function which you showed was somewhat closer to how LLM handles the quantization. One thing to note is that in many of my functions, I'm not handling infinity or NANs, but in the real world of LLMs, we have to handle that. So the LLM quantization functions will be more complex than this. These simpler functions are giving you motivation and a good background grasp on what is going on actually. Uh, to show the visualization, we, we create uh, like one to two, maybe like 100 values like I have changed here. You can have 500 values or 100 values in this input function. Uh, we are simulating 8-bit, 4-bit, and 2-bit even quantization using our function. And we are trying to again convert X uh, into real space to see if we use this quantization, how the information loss looks like. And then I'm plotting this, the truth value, and then 8-bit, 4-bit, and 2-bit. Uh, let us look at how it looks like in the visualization space. What is going on here is the truth value 
like is almost overlapped with the 8-bit quantization. The reason is that 8-bit has minimal loss in the information, like we also show earlier in the weight space. But the 4-bit, which you see here, actually does lose the information. But although it closely follows the ground truth, like the a blue line. And the 2-bit is actually just have two values, like 0 and 1. And like you see here, there is a minimal uh, information being carried and maximum loss happens. Uh, hopefully, this kind of gives you a good understanding that with different level of precision in the quantization, we are going to get different losses in the information as this is expected. Now, where the fun begins. So let us play with the LAMA 8 p quantized model. Uh, you might have to kind of uh, upgrade these packages depending on when you're running this notebook. But I'm going to use MetaLama, so 3 8 b model, 8 billion parameters. And I'm going to define this uh, BNB config, which is from bits and bytes config, where we will load this model in 4-bit. We'll even do double quantization, what is main and further helps us and also it tries to uh, kind of restore some of the precision loss. We are going to use a type of quantization, which is called NF4. NF4 is like non-finite four-bit quantization, which actually kind of handles non-finite numbers like N and infinity and so on. Uh, like you show in my earlier examples, we didn't care about these things, but in reality, you have to handle if you're going to play with LLMs and you're going to go forward and passes for inferences and so on. And uh, finally, because in this one we have access to one GPU, we're going to do device mapping like the entire model to the first GPU itself. You need to pass in your HF token, hugging face token, uh, because this model as such uh, is uh, publicly available, but you have to request access from your hugging face account. And then you need to give this input of the token here. Like we see here, this we are loading uh, close to like uh, five, 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 and let's look at 16 plus GBs of data but our entire uh, like um, a GPU memory is just 15 GB. So quantization does help. And finally, after quantization, actually, if you see, we are only using around 5.8 GB of memory. So we still have uh, close to nine to 10 GB free, uh, which you can actually exploit to do uh, tuning even in this free uh, tire of Google Colab. Uh, we have to use a tokenizer. If you are uh, very new to tokenizers, uh, catch up my other videos in the channel, which explains how tokenizers work and also kind of gives a good understanding of how they have changed over time. Finally, we kind of get output from the model. Here are some things which are defined, but most important things are like, we don't want reputation to happen. Model can stop early if it reaches the max length. And then uh, and like end of sentence, tokenizer, ID, and so on. Uh, this is where your input goes into the model and the output kind of comes from it. It takes uh, some time to run this, so let us actually again run it. And since it's non-deterministic, you will see that um, the output may change slightly. And to make it deterministic, you can probably set the temperature value such that it uh, kind of doesn't do sampling and always shows where it shows your deterministic output. Uh, it may take a few kind of uh, seconds to run. But while it's running, let us look at what happens. So once the output comes up, we can, we can decode that batch. And here I'm using text trap to show it very well. So in this one, I just had asked it to explain the quantization in simple terms and it's kind of answering it fine. And this is, remember, this is a four-bit quantized model which we are running. And like you see here, the output does make sense. It's not uh, giving us garbage. It's kind of explaining it uh, quite, uh, quite well, giving, giving the concept of the signals and system because the quantization originally comes from there and shows us that depending on the number of bits you use to represent a signal, uh, your quantization noises kind of comes into picture. Uh, let us see uh, uh, and wait for this run to complete. And this kind of is uh, closer to the end of the video. Uh, you can follow more videos on my channel. And in the future, we'll look into how to fine tune this quantized model for some of more interesting tasks. Uh, this mostly concludes our video as of today. Uh, thank you for being here.